Hello and welcome back. I'm here in my back garden and I'm going to show you how some of the vegetables are progressing here and then we'll go off to the allotment and see how they are progressing there. Earlier on I had the cherry tomatoes over here, my usual sun gold that I really love and that was very successful. And over on that side I had the chocolate cherry that had been recommended and I really didn't find that um, very tasty at all. And so I won't be growing those again. Over at the back, I have American cress or land cress, and um, its leaves are really nice to just add a little peppery taste to a salad. It normally, well, it used to seed itself, but only in the weedy patches. But as I've caught up with all the weeding, um, there weren't any that seeded themselves bar one plant. In the front, I have some carrots called Autumn King, and I'm hoping that I haven't um, sown them too late and that I will get a crop by maybe October. And here is Chantenay red cord, another uh, carrot. At the back, there is a chicory called red orchid, and this needs slightly cooler weather. And I'm hoping that within maybe a month, it will have hearted up completely. And then you eat just the center part. You take out all the outer leaves and it's lovely, crisp, slightly bitter salad, which is very nice with a, a sweet salad dressing. And this is the other lot of chicory. They were sown at the same time, but as I had a, a plant here, a tomato plant, that I was still harvesting from, these had to wait in their pot, and you can see the difference that it makes. And I've also planted about four on the allotment near the cottager's kale. In the front, there's that one plant, that one American cress that has seeded itself, and it is doing quite well. It's transplanted well, and it's coming through. And here we have red dragon or pink dragon I think which is a winter radish which will do quite nice well grated or used in stir fries and the same with this Spanish black round radish and this has already gone to seed which doesn't bode too well the first lot was eaten by slugs and so I've grown them again but at the moment I can't see any radishes coming through over here I have Mino Summer cross, which is again a, site, a kind of smaller mooly radish. Now I did grow these once a few years ago on the um, little veggie plot at the back. I grew them, sowed them in March, and they all went to seed around about June or July. So that wasn't too successful. These also need a bit of a cooler weather. So I'm trying to grow plants that need a cooler weather this time as a successional plant. And at the back we've got winter purslane, and this is also known as claytonia and also miner's lettuce because it's high in vitamin C. And um, it's also can be confused with ordinary purslane, which is from the family Portulaca. And this is from a different family, Claytonia, something which I'll put up on the screen soon. And I think I meant to thin these out to about two to three inches and I've not grown these before. So that should be interesting. This isn't quite like um, square foot planting square foot gardening but it has got a slight flavor of it in that I'm growing a little bit of lots of things and to see if I like them and to have some continuity in eating these vegetables and here on the garden table I've got the carrots these are the Paris market or atlas which are these nice small ones which I've already pulled out so I don't embarrass myself by tugging at them and not being able to pull them out and here the slightly longer ones are the Royal Chantenay. This one now has been totally harvested. I've used up all the carrots there. Those two over the back there are ready to be harvested and those two over there will be harvested in about a week or two. And in this way I've extended my, my area of growing and my carrot harvest. In the back veggie patch I have some wooden slats which I got from a skip with permission and I know they're not scaffold boards but um, you've got to do the best with what you've got and so I put them at the edge there along where the Karaka black blackberries went and they do serve to keep it nice and neat and tidy. I have made the mistake of overcrowding this path with green zebra tomatoes and that's why they suffered so much and with other plants so they didn't get watered neither did the Karaka black blackberries and I think you can see the result there's not going to be many blackberries for next year and so I have learned a lesson from that. On this side here 
I've got some, again, kind of scaffold boarding, not as wide as I would like, but it's still giving me a slightly raised bed. On that side there are the kind of boards that I have just acquired, which I'll be doing over there to make a kind of very low raised bed. And these six paving slabs I got from Epsom Free Cycle, so I, I am really pleased with that. And I'll show you the vegetables that are on the side of it from the other side, because this is going into the sun. And these are the Brussels sprouts that I've grown for their leaves. And they're not bad at all, the tender leaves that is. Um, but I'm not sure I'll grow them for leaves again because I've got so much kale that I much prefer. But I do love the Brussels tops. And I will be um, growing some Brussels sprouts now that I know that shredding them and adding some spices makes them a bit more tasty. Over there are the kalettes. And I haven't got any kalettes on them yet, but I think I can... Uh, eat the leaves which I should be trying. In the middle is where the foxes use this as a trampoline but they seem to have grown up a bit and so have stopped doing that I hope. And over there some more purple sprouting broccoli which I'm going to look forward to in the hungry gap. And moving on from the kales are the kales that I really like which I mentioned before. These three Taunton or Taunton Dean kale perennial kale seedlings that I grew only in the spring. I took them from cuttings in the spring and they've grown so well and I've been eating those and thoroughly enjoying them. And moving back from the perennial kale, there's a nice stand of comfrey and I've taken four cuttings from this comfrey and I think this has been the best year for it but I have made an effort to feed it with well-rotted manure, to water it well, to feed it with um, garden compost and so I now don't um, uh, put it in an open trug where it really stinks. I've now got 80 litre sort of bins where I store it and I'll show it to you at the back now. And here at the back of the garden I've got two 80 litre bins which I got for about uh, 12 or 13 pounds from the internet and I put a C on one of them for comfrey and an N on the other for nitrogen and in the nitrogen one I had a whole lot of nettles but I don't seem to be able to get enough nettles anymore because um, the nettles in the allotment are being taken over by the brambles. So I also mixed it in with some well rotted down um, manure in a bag, the hessian bag, but the hessian bag rotted. So this is now a nice mixture and um, of well rotted manure and nettles. And so I'll just use that as a nice nitrogen liquid manure for the future. And here in the front of plot one on the allotment are the leeks under a very fine veggie mesh to keep out the leaf mining little critters and the leaf moth. I'm not sure it's done its job because I can already see little black flies in there so we'll see how it goes. I'll show you on a closer look. I've lifted the covering so you can see a bit better. I've got below zero there. I've multi sown some of them and I have some in singles so I can see how they're doing and I have lion prize taker. But I also have here autumn giant in singles here and in some multiples over there. And then at the back there, this rather large Bulgarian giant in singles and in multiples. And um, I'm really quite pleased with the leeks this year so far. I didn't put them into, uh, you know, I didn't dibble a hole and then put them in and then water in. I've just planted them and I'll see how that works this year, mainly because I was being very, very lazy. But um, so far I'm pleased with them. And I'll just show you how they're doing, well certainly below zero, how it's doing on um, the allotment at Wisley. And this is the below zero at Wisley, beautiful leeks. They are doing so well and they look just ready to be eaten now on the 12th of September. Wonderful crop. And while the leeks have been a success, this lovely Swiss chard has not. It has, it's called Pink Passion and it's got the most beautiful pink colour stems but, and it's uh, vigorous, but it's got, this, I'm not sure you can see it, these horrible disease all over it. And maybe I have neglected it, I haven't watered it enough, I haven't fed it, I don't know, mare corpora and all that. But I thought maybe I'll just dig it up and forget about it. But I thought again, I thought what I'll do is just cut it down to a few leaves, water it well and put a good mulch on it and see if that will help it. Otherwise I'm going to have to dig it up. And this is the bed of greens. Over here is the wonderful cottager's kale which I have been eating, cooking that and making my own form of cannon, champ, whatever, cooking that down, um, a little bit of my own grown 
um, potatoes, Charlotte potatoes, and my own overwintering radar onions fried and mixed together. It's a lovely dish. And over here are the chicories, the four extra chicories, and they are doing so well, and I'm looking forward to eating them. And right at that end over here are the purple sprouting broccoli, and that is doing really quite well also. And on the wildlife patch with a little pond. I did clean the pond out and it's as dirty as ever which maybe is how it's meant to be and I did buy this uh, oxygenating plant called Kratophyllum dispersum something like that. I'll put it up on the screen and I know the frog is in there because he wasn't very pleased that I'd taken this from the uh, water but it tends to sink and I wanted something that would float to the top so I'll be looking out for something like that too to help this little pond and help the frogs. I learned that uh, male frogs in winter burrow into the soil in the bottom unfortunately there is no soil at the bottom and the females go into little bits of um, wood and rocks with the young ones as well uh, so I would like to make at some point a very small I think it's called is it a hibernium or something like that. I'll have to look it up uh, for especially for frogs and toads. And there he is, hiding there, <laughs> and he's gone. And this is the end of the tomatoes. Really quite sad. And I've taken some of them down already over there, and I'll show you some of the harvest that I've got at home on the garden table. And this is some of the tomato harvest. I've given away an awful lot. We found a food bank just 10, 12 minutes down the road, drive down the road, and I've given quite a bit there and to some friends and done some swapsies on the allotment and given some to neighbors. And I'm really pleased with what we've done this year. These two tomatoes are Brandy Boy, and they are absolutely enormous. And they are a soft tomato, and this one has been uh, crushed by its own weight in a bag, but I'll be eating that soon. And I know that I'm not into growing big tomatoes. I keep telling myself I'm growing for flavor, but there's an unwilling, guilty um, uh, enjoyment that I have grown tasty and big tomatoes. And I have nothing against people who want to grow big uh, vegetables or to grow them for exhibition competitions. That's a bit of fun. And over here are the pink rugby tomatoes, which are a tasty tomato. I'm quite pleased with that. Uh, they're not as tasty as Brandy Boy, but I think they're worth growing. And I might grow those again at some point. And here are my other favorites. This one is a raw green zebra, and this one is a ripe one. And you can just tell by touching it, palpating it, and it also turns slightly yellow. It hasn't been a very good harvest for these because I messed them about by putting them somewhere I couldn't water them or weed. So uh, they, it's my own fault really that I've done that. Over here we've got the Sakura tomato, which I find is a bit better than the chocolate cherry, but it's still a bit of a boring, ordinary tomato, nothing special about it. The good thing about these big tomatoes is that all you need is a few slices in a lasagna. You don't have to make a tomato sauce, just a few slices uh, laid as a layer and it makes a lovely lasagna with other vegetables. At the back you can see that I have started preserving the tomatoes. I make my own passata by just really boiling down the tomatoes. I keep the seeds in and I keep the skins in. And I can make a decision later on when I'm cooking whether I want to remove them or not. But I use the, um, the water bath method to cook them and preserve them and seal them. And I'm using not kilner jars here but ball jars with um, open uh, wide mouths. And I've got about 12 of the small ones which are 490 mil and four of the large ones. And these are the cabbages in the front of plot two. These are the beautiful cabbies. They're absolutely enormous and I've eaten most of them, just a few left. And then I have the red rookie, which again are doing very well this year. I don't know what happened to the slugs, but they, this year they didn't seem to bother them at all. And this is the lovely Razzle Dazzle, but I'm here to show you the Tromba Dalbenga. And now I've eaten two of these already and this part is quite tender, so I've just sliced those and fried those. This part, I've eaten them when they're about a foot long. This part is a bit more dense and sweeter, so I've cut them in two inch um, portions, sliced them in half, parboiled them, and then fried them. They really are not bad at all. Much better than the usual courgettes. And over there, you can just about see that one there hanging up. And I'll just show you some bigger ones at Wisley. And this is how big a tromboncino or tromba di albenga can grow. 
This is at Wisley on the 12th of September in one of the um, allotments that they have to train people up. And here is another one, even bigger, absolutely enormous. And you know I told you I'd lost one dahlia. Well, it simply hadn't come up and I hadn't lost it at all. And this is it, Art Deco. It's a lovely little one. I'm in the back garden with the canna plants and the Morellii banana and the Moschuto hibiscus. And there are a few planks at the back there that I'm going to use for raised beds later on. It's really appreciated if you would comment and also subscribe. Thank you.